Last week, what did I do? Last week I uploaded a video on a review about some Artist Loft color pencils that I love still to this day. And also, um, I think I did a watercolor. Yeah. Yeah, I did a, I did a watercolor. I don't know what I did with it though. I kind of got some stuff rearranged and to fit this stuff here. Okay, so what we have here is time uh, um this is going to be a mixed media piece. This is oil paint. This is inspiration for said oil paint. And just inspiration in general because I love her and I love looking at her. And I usually have her sitting over in the corner over there to add some color and spice to that corner all the way over there. But she's sitting here right now because I need her as a cheerleader to forge on. And a reminder of sorts of certain things I don't want to leave out of this painting. So that's what I'm doing. Um, there is video footage that you just saw of me starting the underpainting for this one. I kind of forgot to turn on the camera when I did the second layer. So she does probably look a little different. Um, but let me turn and show, let me zoom in on them. So yeah, she looks a little different. But, um, she's going to be so cute. She's going to definitely be mixed media. I don't know if I'll be... <laughs> I'm not sure when I upload this, will I have already uploaded some videos that I edited from my live Periscope, which is every Monday at 7 p.m. If you haven't tuned in, you should. I don't know why I don't do... I think the reason why I don't do live on YouTube it's because I don't get any feedback like I do on Periscope. I mean, there are a few people who comment here, but I just think that I would be talking to myself, kind of. But anyway, um, she's going to be a mixed media piece. I have her sketched out right here. And uh, let's see. This will be what she looks like. Can you see that? And this is the next piece. But I haven't done a color study on her yet. This piece here is her. I think I'm going to make her hair blonde. And that's the thumbnail that I chose versus that pose. I did a thumbnail with the color study and everything. So that's what you see. Oh, well, you don't see. Because I don't have it on there. That's kind of what you see there. Let's um, come back out. Even had our there. So that's what you see going on here. So that's what I'm working on today. And um, I didn't plan to time lapse her because I just don't want to keep moving the camera around. Um, but I think I'm going to just shorten the legs on this tr existing tripod and sit it on the desk and point the camera this way. And hopefully that'll work out as far as a good way to film it. It's pretty big. And I need to be able to stand right here or sit right here, depending on what part of her I'm working on. And I don't want to be blocking the camera with all of my chubby goodness. <laughs> all right, so, yeah. Um, this is gonna, I, I'm, I'm, so this is gonna be interesting how I edit this video, same as how I'm recording two time lapses. I don't know if I'm gonna actually do it in two separate videos or one, I don't know, but I'll have a lot of stuff I'm gonna be recording and I'm not really necessarily looking forward to it. Yay! Bye! What? I don't know where she went. She didn't even take her phone songwriting or singing or playing instruments or you know so I'm listening to happy D artists while I uh, paint I don't know if this is going to be an issue with copyright you love, you love them because hopefully it won't of, of their unique I just really wanted to go ahead and film me doing the hair you don't love them because of their technical um, breath but of course part of your love for them is tied into how skilled they are at what they do. I like some of the topics so, she discussed while I'm painting. You know, your band Especially since not, it's just you know, kind of kind of like keeping me company world, also while I work. That have a catchy melody ah. or have a unique sound that draws I'd be feeling lonely sometimes in this art space, especially in the wee hours of the morning that I paint. 
and your favorite the house is quiet have the fanciest vocabulary and in the world, that's not the big deal for me you know i don't mind the house being quiet and being late in the middle night because it's like 4 a.m here where i am no, what I, right now and but this is where it's really important you know even though your favorite band is not um, the best singer or guitar player in the world, uh, they're still to say. very, very good at it. They're able to sing on key and perform in front of an audience. Um, and, um, you it know, they, still they can still get kind of really, really lonely, well, far above average. In order to especially be able when to, I just kind of want you know, some conversation or something, I usually have a movie on like Netflix justice. or something. But and, um, same with your favorite I author. just they got finished be, watching a movie because you know, I'm just going to finish the hair of, up. Um, you know, and then I'm going to bed. But they still have I didn't want to really get into something of grammar and else. <laughs> and they're knowing that I'm going to go to bed. Because then I'm going to stay up and finish and watching it, you know? So, yeah. I said I'm not going to worry about another... Oh, that's not... Stories. Oh, that that kind of looks and weird. I need to finish it. Of, I need to take it to a technical place. Depth yeah. That they're able to find yeah. their unique voice and you know find a unique style of writing that can engage um, with their readers. So I think I want to show you this whole piece, but I just don't want to move the camera right now. I'll show you in well a minute. Visual arts as well. I wish I had filmed this because this was Many really one of my today best. Pieces in a while. I that mean, I like to all of them are good, but painting, Many of the successful <sighs> she just said it. This is my. I hadn't done pop surrealism in a while. In a while, and that's that's what exactly Sometimes what this is. Their paintings or drawings are actually very rough and very simple and minimal. And, um, I love it you know, though. That is just part of their I style. miss doing and this. Why I, love and I was doing kind of a trendy art thing with a lot of it's just quick paintings, a very unique just a, style or a very um, aesthetic, or perhaps the subject matter that they choose to paint, or the color palettes they to, use, uh, are things that to sell art quickly. That speak to me. But it wasn't and art that really however, satisfied me, you know? Spirit, you know, my soul just felt like... Plus, it was, it was something that I kept feeling like, everybody does this, you know? Foundation of it just doesn't feel and unique. And, you know, fundamental skills I like doing, skills. like, the natural hair um, paintings, the afro art, and stuff like that. Or their but... They, they practice all the time. I remember when in like I saw it getting real popular when Ash the Painter you know, they shaded was um, and cubes popular and on social media. Unfortunately, you know, things didn't work out into, for her as far as the business went. Understanding of proper and she tried to make a comeback, and, and, and I, it's just and really like with the different medias they, use they shut her down. I think she had a lot of orders in the past that she didn't process, and she just probably style. got overwhelmed. Her popularity grew so quickly, and you got to really and, you know, as Picasso once said, manage you your money so, like you pro, so you can have money to ship the paintings. But and, you know, sometimes, you know, I've been in situations mind, where it's like, you won't be able to do them justice unless you're uh, the necessary tools I to really need stories. this money to take no care of this bill. And then you don't have any money left over for shipping. But luckily for me, it's just worked out where out my shipping policy potential. says three to five and business likewise, days. So as long as I ship within that time frame, you know, as far as, you know, stuff that's already made. Um, you do still need to have I wouldn't worry about it necessarily for your part or stuff that attention. you happen and, you know, to create. Course, you know, say a disclaimer: a lot of that's just artists different. are actually very famous and successful and well respected by doing photorealism. So no way am I saying that photorealism is not as good. But even the artists who do photorealism, they find a, a subject matter or find a body of work. Um, in which the, the the theme is unique, and the theme is what makes them stand out. So, basically, all I'm saying is, it, you do need to have a balance of having some sort of creativity in whatever way, shape, or form, and also um, the proper fundamental skills. And it's a tough balance to strike, but she's talking time, about something really something good because a I've lot of times really I feel learn, like in my own art journey, especially with the I trendy started, art, I did not have a unique style. At all. Um, the best I could do was copy from a lot of people can't like or do the fundamentals. Like fruit, doing like a still, you know, and. As I grew in my technical proficiency, 
I found myself so I find that a lot of times with the trendy stuff is what happens is um more courageous I was in exploring new ideas and what am I trying to say and so they, sta you know, they stay stagnant. They're still painting the same stuff, you know, two and three years. With drawing and painting yet. Don't fret too much about finding a personal, unique style. Um, you For know, now, we'll you know, later and we'll come you don't see a real major more skilled shift. at the fundamentals. Or, and also, um, just because you have mastered the fundamental skills doesn't mean that there is no longer room to grow. I think there's always in their style, room you know, to improve it looks, in your it, I mean, not even, you just want to wanna see some growth. You know, like, and I try, I remember when I couldn't paint hands. In situations and I was determined to, <laughs> to learn how. That you normally wouldn't. And that's what pushes your technical I remember when I was well. always scared so to paint anything video. from uh, I ended, I to um, share these the neck down entries from or just maybe the breast but I didn't want to I was scared I to paint clothing for a long time so I painted and nudes and 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 pledge at least one dollar to enter. We're scared to paint and clothing because I thought, you know, you so much for being a it's so much harder to paint clothing. When episode. really, Bye. clothing is, is 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 an illusion. It's the nudes that you really have to know proportions. Clothing is all about illusions, you know, that you can create with the paint. <laughs> Which I think is also why a lot of times people can paint better than they can draw. Because it's easy to create those illusions with paint. And I'm going to have to watch her video again. Because <laughs> I've been talking this whole time. I really like this yellow and pink. I mean, it's like a really pale yellow. And this was actually an accident. <laughs> I used the um, Portland Warm Gray by Gamblin. And, um... I really like this. I thought it was an odd color for me to just pick up because I'm usually a person who likes jewel tones, bold colors, you know, stuff like that. And but I don't know. I just I really wanted I really wanted some colors that were different from the color palette I usually tend to gravitate towards. I guess that was me learning to evolve from my style. And, um, let me see, artists that I'm heavily inspired by, I don't know why I feel the need to discuss that, but I want to, and I wouldn't say heavenly, because I think it's actually a mixture of a lot of different artists that I've kind of combined my style into, and somehow also in, in there, finding my own way and voice as well, you know, um, Let's see. Let me think of artists that I am truly inspired by. And I've even taken a page or two from their book. Um, Audrey Kawasaki definitely is one of them. I absolutely love her art. It's, it's so dreamy and just beautiful and ethereal and lucid and flowy <laughs> um definitely one of my favorite surrealists um of course you know that's a living artist there are a few dead ones that i love like salvador dali i uh, sometimes occasionally pay homage to him in my art muka gustav Klim. uh let's see Um, Van Gogh, especially when I'm doing landscapes, the whimsical trees, I, 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 I definitely love that from him. Uh, let's see, Living Again, Mandy Sung with a T, the, the T is silent. She's a Canadian artist and I believe she's based out of Vancouver. Um, she actually did a portrait of me. I want to get my hands on it, but... I don't have the money. I know. I thought at one time she was going to offer prints. Um, I think I commented under one of her pictures about it. I'm going to email her though. When I get some extra funds. 
Um, I'm trying to mix this this Portland gray with a little bit of pink to get these little random pink highlights. I like them. And that was a happy accident that I said, okay, we're going to do that again. <laughs> you know? And I like how it gets darker towards the end of the strand. Definitely a happy accident. All right. I don't want too many of them now. Because she's already very pink. <laughs> Her undertones are very pale. Um, Scandinavian, I guess, or whatever. You know, just a very pale, pale blonde blue-eyed. That's what I tend to like to gravitate towards when I paint Caucasian women. Is blonde blue eyes. I very seldom paint them with dark hair because of the way I like to make my features. People just, just think that it's a racially ambiguous woman. Why don't you, I guess it's okay. Especially if, you know, you might be Hispanic or, you know, light-skinned black woman who might like the painting and can identify with it based on her features. Um, though I did the first one with this weird mix of colors that made this kind of ashy yellow. And, um, I have so much of it now. And it's, you know, with oils, you want them, to, you don't want to waste your paint. So I'm looking for like one of them little containers. I know I have one around here that I can hopefully put that in. <laughs> so I can use it on something else soon. I definitely love her face. And although I've augmented it to some degree to make her look white, she still looks a lot like the women that I paint though. The cheekbones, the face shape, the shape of the lips, they're just thinner. Eye shape is still the same. Like I said, I mainly just focused on making sure that she had the right skin tone and the more angular nose and thinner lips. Um, and of course, you know, blonde hair. But, you know, blonde hair is not indicative of just white women. So, um, there's that. But, you know, just trying to kind of, um, diversify my portfolio I mean there's no real reason or in particular why I want to other than I want to know how to paint everything I don't want to say I can't paint that I, if I don't paint it it's because I choose not to not because I can't you know that's what I want it to be and, um, I'm probably going to go back over these strands with more of the blonde again, just to mute some of this, um, very st streaky, stripey hair situation. I'm using a, well, no, this is a, um, number three script brush. Um, it's fun. I like script brush doing hair. I love it for doing hair. I start off with a wide angle brush. You know, something like a flat or an angle. Something like that. When I'm doing flowy hair. Now, if I'm doing... Something that's kind of like naturally kinky curly hair. I uh, go with the more short round. I 
that. I really dig the way this is turning out. Let me see if I can zoom in so you guys can get a close look. She's got a really beautiful face. And also, actually, I'm going to go ahead and step back so you guys can see. That's the hair coming together. But let me take a step back so you guys can see the painting. It's kind of dark in here. I have to keep it kind of dark during the summer months because there is somewhere, some way, an opening somehow in the basement by the window or something. I can't see it because this is an unfinished basement. So there's like... I'm moving something out of the way so I can pull this back. But, so, so occasionally what happens is I get hornets that like to come visit. And they're not little hornets. Even though a hornet in and of itself is never what you want to come visit you. Okay. I think I can get this all on the frame. There we go. Good enough. <laughs> Good enough. Yep. Get Got it good enough. This is a 30 inch by 40 inch wood, birch wood panel that is cradled on, you know, so it's ready to hang. Um, the painting does carry around to the sides. The wood grain is kind of mimicked throughout the painting. Um, I just did a wash acrylic wash of the, the um, green, the blue, and the purple. And then the wash did a nice job highlighting the wood grain. So I brought it forward with darker colors of oil in the same tone of the, of the wash colors. You know, where the green is, I did a darker green. I think I used Viridian green and Thalo green. Bethalo green, I think that's how you say it. I never, I always mean to Google it to find out how you say it. Um, Thalo, I think it is. I'm not sure, but um, sometimes in some in some areas, those same greens, I made a little lighter to give some gradient or variation of the colors with titanium white. Titanium white, I use with all of them. Um, the ultramarine. In the blue section sometimes with titanium white mixed in it to lighten it up and also um what is the other blue that i use manganese i think blue and then towards the bottom i use quinacridone perp violet and dioxine violet both with titanium white the thing is, when I realized later in doing this painting was that this was supposed to be the cool version of one that I did that I'll show you in a second. I'm sure you've seen it in the backdrops of my um, videos. Um, this is supposed to be the cool version of that, or the day version, and that's the night version. Um, but <laughs> I realize now that she has warm tones but a cool purple at the bottom. And this one has cool tones, cool green, cool blues, with a warm purple at the bottom. But I guess it's better that it would flip the script that way and kind of ties them together in a weird opposite effect. Um, she's also going to have some, all kinds of cool little things in her hair to kind of give her hair that whole crown situation. Uh... Some steampunk gears and a chrysanthemum and maybe some butterflies, a monarch butterfly. But now let's go over here so you can kind of see. It's dark, but I think you'll still be able to see the other painting that inspired this painting. I'm going to turn a light on so you can see better. This has a energy saver bulb, so it takes a minute to get brighter. But you can kind of see amongst the teddy bears that are over there. Same thing. A little different. 
a little different. You know, she got one eye covered, <laughs> whereas she had both of them. But um, same little ghostly figure, you know, where you can kind of still see through her. And you can't see because it bears in a way, but she also, just tilt them down a little bit. <laughs> she also has that ghostly body. Hers, you know, is a little shorter. Because um, I guess I got so carried away with the wood grain that I didn't, and I liked it so much, I didn't want to mess over it by painting over it. So she has a shorter torso. No belly button for her. Um, so yeah, the light is giving it a weird, funky glare. I got certain areas where I did a lot of, um, most of this is lean and then I, and then, you know, fat, you know, which is lean is, uh, me using just like a paint thinner to thin the paint out. And then some of the parts are fat where I used, um, linseed oil. Um, so yeah. Let's see if I can just bring you a little closer where you don't see the glare. Or you might still see it. Unless I get all the way up on it. You can see some of the details in her hair. So yeah, she'll have a chrysanthemum and some in the little gold gears. They might be silver since it's supposed to be the cooler painting. And some type of I'm thinking instead of a, a, a monarch, a luna moth will be in her hair. And you can see some of the bubbles and stuff. Like, to give the illusion that this is like water and kind of melting. So, yeah. That's what this will be. I mean, that's what she is. And, um, my bed's not made, excuse me. <laughs> and, um, that's what she'll be. Yep, it's going to be great. I love way, the way it's turning out. So I just want to turn the camera on really quick and talk about that. Um, I wish I'd have turned, I, I painted, I mean, ugh, what am I trying to say? Recorded the whole process of this. But the reason why I didn't is because, I don't feel like taking this off the tripod, so <laughs> I'm just going to keep walking back and forth. <laughs> With the whole tripod. <laughs> Alright, so let me sit this down here. And I'm going to ready to end this video. Because it's going to cut off shortly. Here. This is um, a piece that I did. At the same time I was working on the piece over there. And so, as you can see... Lots of details. She's already been varnished and everything. She's a 3D piece. So the flowers actually are added on. And they have like a gloss resin like finish on them. So they have that glassy effect. And she has all these nice details in her skirt. Like lace detailing. Let's see if I can get that. Yeah, you see the lace detailing. She needs another coat of varnish, and then she'll be good to go to get it framed. So, I've been busy. I just don't be turning the camera on because it's so much work. I am going to do better, though, because I really want my channel to, um... I like the vlogging. I enjoy the vlogging. But I also want my channel to really showcase some really dope time-lapse paintings of me making some really dope art and if i keep painting everything without the camera on <laughs> you're missing out although a lot of this stuff i do work on on periscope i will do that if i'm working on a project on on mondays when i do periscope i will go ahead and sometimes paint live on periscope working on that project so anyway that's enough um, this is a real time video and <laughs> I'm going to say hi to you guys because you haven't seen my face in a long time. 
I don't know when the last time I uploaded a video, but, um, yeah, it's been what? This is a 25, oh my god, this is going to be like a 30 minute video by the time I put the, um, intro in and all that stuff and the stuff at the end and watch this and subscribe and everything. But thank you for watching. I just thought I'd pop in impromptu 4.46 a.m. in the morning working on this painting while listening to Happy D Artists. And if you don't, if you haven't subscribed to her, definitely check her out. She's an amazing artist and she did a lot of oil paintings and work and mostly oil paintings and some drawings. And she has good tips for those of you that are artists. Um, I want to discuss some of those topics and give my feedback as well. So those will be things that I'll be working on eventually. But in the meantime, in the between time, peace and grace. And I'll see you when I see you, I guess. We're going to get this together. But I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to do what I can, okay? <laughs>